Hello and welcome friends. From this lecture we are going to start a new series on the lectures on regression or more precisely linear regression. Uh, on regression two kinds of two different kinds of series of lectures I am going to present. One will be on classical approach, the old approach in which variable y is dependent on x and variable x is dependent on y as well. That is the classical approach in Indian subcontinent and in many Asian countries till undergraduation. This classical approach is to be studied in school and board examinations and uh, university examination graduation courses mostly the classical approach of regression is to be studied that's why one series will be on classical approach and another series I am going to present will be on the modern approach in which only the variable y is dependent on x but at some point both are same because basically the modern approach is directly dependent on the classical approach itself the difference is nowadays it is strictly believed that the dependent variable is always y in classical approach the thing is different x is also taken as dependent variable but this lecture is common for both because this is the starting point of regression and say in this lecture we are going to discuss the answer of a question after correlation what uh, let us think we have a large population large population having capital n number of pairs of two variables say x and y the population large population and there are large population means there are thousands or say many thousands or millions of observations of what pairs of two variables x and y that means we are interested in studying the relationship between these two variables but since the population is large we cannot directly study the population or entire population so we randomly selected a sample of size small n from it sufficient n is sufficient or sufficiently large or small whatever the case may be mostly for the purpose of studying correlation we generally select a small sample but it is not mandatory to select a small sample we can um, say uh, select a large sample that is small n is 30 or more also particularly the case where we are going to study through a grouped data or bivariate frequency distribution we generally select a large sample we analyze the sample and calculated the coefficient of correlation on the basis of the sample or for the sample we have already selected we have calculated the coefficient of correlation that means now we are well aware about the type of relationship and somewhat about the degree of relationship now what that means as a student you can think that we have already calculated the coefficient of correlation now what to find out probable error the next stage is to find out the probable error to check whether the coefficient of correlation is greater than six times of probable error or not we have already discussed the concepts of probable error as well as standard error please go through the lectures on the concepts of probable error as well as standard error you can refer to the playlist of uh, correlation so after calculating coefficient of correlation now we calculate probable error and check whether coefficient of correlation is greater than 6 probable error or not. Now if the answer is no, then what? If the coefficient of correlation is less than 6 times of probable error, then we can conclude that there is no significant relationship between these two variables. And so there is no need of further analysis. Stop the analysis and conclude that 
the variables are not significantly correlated so there is no need to study them further there is another alternative that means a after calculating probable error and checking whether coefficient of correlation is greater than 6 probable error or not we have another alternative of course we can do both the things to find out the coefficient of determination that is capital R square but it is nothing it is squared value of the coefficient of correlation since it is a squared value it is always positive what R square or coefficient of determination suggests if coefficient of determination tends to zero that means if the squared value of the coefficient of correlation is near to zero then we can conclude that there is no significant correlation between the two variables under consideration now the coefficient of correlation is always between zero and minus one or zero and plus one so it is always a fractional value if we take square of it it will further decrease for example if coefficient of correlation is 0.7 or negative 0.7 its square will be square of 0.7 or square of point negative 0 0.7 0 0.49 if the coefficient of correlation is exactly 0.5 or minus 0.5 its square value will be my, uh, two, 0.25 only so the squared value is always less than the value of the coefficient of correlation but it is always positive now if the squared value of the coefficient of correlation that is known as coefficient of determination tends to zero if it is near to zero then we can conclude that there is no significant correlation between the two variables so there is no need of further study but if the coefficient of determination that means squared value of the coefficient of correlation tends to 1 if it is near to 1 say in case of coefficient of correlation 0.9 its squared value is 0.81 that is quite high if the coefficient of correlation is 0.75 it looks high reasonably high but its squared value is only 0.5625 but 0.5625 which is greater than 0.5 according to me is quite high because squared value of a fraction between 0 and 1 is too, is not easy to tend to 1 so if the coefficient of determination is near to 1 there is a significant correlation between the two variables roughly we can say that if the coefficient of determination is greater than 0.5 that means it is between 0.5 and 1 it shows a significant correlation between the two variables though this numerical range of 0.5 and 1 is not mandatory or compulsory for all kinds of variables it is totally dependent on the variables under consideration so don't take this range of 0.5 and 1 as rigidly it is just a suggestion say you can say that it is my personal suggestion now if the coefficient of correlation is greater than 6p and or if the coefficient of determination tends to 1 or according to me it is between 0.5 and 1 then what there is significant correlation now if there is significant correlation between the two variables that is our conclusion what is the if we find significant correlation between the two variables we are obviously interested in a functional relationship because now we want to go further if the two variables under consideration are significantly correlated we are interested in them at present as well as we will be interested in them in future so we are obviously interested in a functional relationship which can be helpful in estimating the value of one variable when we have a value of another variable known from some other sources because now we are interested in these two variables for a long term so if any point of time we have value of any of them is available from another sources we shall need to find out the estimated value of the other variable to find out this estimated value we should have a functional relationship between the two variables 
So, if there is co significant correlation between the two variables, then in the next stage, we will be interested in having some functional relationship between the two variables. Regression gives us such kind of functional relationship. This is the significance of the regression analysis. Regression gives us such kind of functional relationship between the two variables. So, the stage of correlation is now over and we found that the variables under consideration are significantly correlated. The next stage is regression analysis to establish the functional relationship between the two variables such that we can estimate or we can find the estimated value of any one variable on the basis of the available value of the other variable. So, regression is a relationship between two variables determined by an appropriate mathematical function. These are some say meanings or definitions of regression. What regression is exactly? Another definition given by M. M. Blair is regression analysis is a mathematical measure of the average relationship. Average relationship, very important term. Because statistics is ultimately the science of averages. In establishing the functional relationship through regression, we shall go with means. The very important role of mean is there in establishing the functional relationship between the two variables. So regression analysis is a mathematical measure of the average relationship between two or more variables. Two or more. The same thing is there in case of multiple regression. But to study multiple regression, it is necessary for us to study the regression for two variables. If we study the regression for two variables properly, then only we can go for studying multiple regression analysis. So that will be on later stage. Two or more variables in terms of original units of the data. Yes, very good uh, definition. Two main things, average relationship and the in terms of the units of the data. If the units of the data are well defined, say x is in terms of kilograms and y is in terms of rupees or any other unit, the regression gives us the relationship in same terms. So the estimated value will be directly in the original units of the data. That is very important characteristics of regression. And we can conclude that regression is a statistical technique with the help of which, you can say mathematical technique also, with the help of which the functional relationship between the two variables can be established that helps in estimating the unknown value of one variable for a known value of the other. So after correlation, we have come to know that there is significant correlation between the two variables. So now we are interested in establishing the functional relationship and the technique or statistical technique of establishing the functional relationship between the two correlated variables is known as regression. That's it. In the next lecture, we are going to discuss the concept of coefficients. And as usual, we are going to remember the great Carl Pearson.